Hi, welcome back to Open Up Live, our first show of the new year, 2018, I'm so excited about. want to tell you really quick about an event coming up Friday that I'm so excited about. Our brother, our family, Jovan Dangerfield. Spencer, can we have that flyer up? This is the Woke Show, and it's happening on Friday night. It's free for the community, releasing the album that night. Jovan Dangerfield is releasing this anticipated album that he's been talking about forever that night. He's going to be doing some drama, performances, just overall being a blessing to the people that need it the most. So I want to put this out January 12th, Friday, 7 p.m., free to the community that's awesome and it's happening at victory outreach in southwest 4704 new horizon boulevard in bakersfield california i hope to see you there are you woke that's what jovan wants to know let's toss it back to the desk where we have the ladies of the frank foundation or the frank family foundation let me get my mind together let me be woke thank you alicia okay. let her be woke. <laughs> be woke thank you alicia I'm Tina Miller. And I'm Don Clark. So welcome back to Open Up Live. And we are, yes, talking with Dr. Diane Frink and Arlena Frink-Waller. Yes. Okay, Don, so glad you did ask those questions <clears throat> earlier about the Cherokee Nation, and that was great information. And we're looking forward to having you and your chief back. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about your father and um, the one that was born a chief into the Cherokee Nation, but just here in Bakersfield, he recently passed. Yes. Let's talk about him. Okay, you can start. Well, so we're really excited to be able to continue our father's legacy, what he meant to this community, and he's just woven into the fibers of this community. He was the impossible made possible, and he gave so many people hope. As you know, he was one of the first African-American um, contractors to do business with the city and with the state. If you go all up Ming, Gosford, and Stockdale, almost all that curb and gutter is his work. Oh. And he did thousands of residents. I mean, he's really had an extensive history professionally, but civic. I mean, he's outstanding, you know, a man of faith, a man of God. And we really are want to keep his legacy alive. Mm. So my sister and I, we formed the Frink Family Foundation. Okay. We will be doing a gala here in 2018. We will be honoring some of our local heroes who have a heart for our community, mm -hmm. as well as giving scholarships to help young boys and girls who have an entrepreneurial uh, desire or who wants to become servicemen or women. Yes, yes. Also, we're not going to limit it to young you know, people, but ah. people in general. Yes. So if you're looking to further your education and you don't, you can't afford it or you mm -hmm. need some support in that area, we're going to make that available also. Because many people go back to school later in life mm -hmm. that didn't have the opportunity uh, earlier in life. Mm -hmm. And I think as long as you're on planet Earth and you're alive, you can continue to do what you want to do, yes. you know, in a, in the right manner. Mm -hmm. And the type of schooling doesn't matter, whether it's vocational or no, it does not matter. Absolutely. It does not matter. And when we think about our father's history, his education level, he, the way that his life was set up and structured, you would think this is a person who would never succeed, and he built an empire. So we absolutely want to be able to have those opportunities available to others. Mm -hmm. It is so important. That is why I believe that we're put on this earth is to be of service. Where was the core of his character formed? We're looking at a couple of pictures on the screen of him right now. Such this a handsome guy. I, you know, Arlena, I was going to say that earlier. He was fly. Let me watch myself here. <laughs> Don't get in trouble, Tina. <laughs> was he, um, now, military, is that Army? Yes. And um, what are we looking at in the second picture? Uh, that was at his 80th birthday party. Uh huh. And okay. it was held at the Petroleum Club here in Bakersfield. Oh. So uh, it was a black tie affair. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have to ask because there was a period here in Bakersfield where literally this city was almost run by the Klan. I mean, the newspaper here said a government of white men or none at all. That's true. <laughs> and yet this man prospered in yes. that environment. How yes. did he do that? Well, you, yeah. you know, I tell you what, um, I listen to more stories from our father than ever. Mm. And they always are the same. They never change. Mm. So I thought when I was a kid, he always told the same story. So he must not be lying. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, but, you know, he, he, he thought if you could get into the Army, and he did put his age up a little bit, 
uh, to be able to get in the Army. He was flat-footed. They say, you'll never be able to make it because you're flat-footed. He over, was able to achieve that and be going to be successful. And the type of things that they were doing then, mm -hmm. you know, 82nd Airborne, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, parachuting oh. into Germany to save the Jews from Hitler. Oh, uh, if you had enough nerve to do that, mm -hmm. then you would believe that you're, anything is possible for yes. you. Yes. And at that time, I believe they were paying $50 a jump, and he said he was going to get rich or die trying. And while he was in the service, he didn't drink, he didn't do drugs, uh, he was a lender. And so if you borrowed money from him, oh, yes. you had to pay him one and a half times back. <laughs> and so I think he's more of a loan shark. But in, you know, so uh, that was where he, I think, the core of his uh, ability came from, mm -hmm. not only from his family, where they believed in hard work means success. Mm -hmm. And my dad was one of the only ones in his family that didn't get a college education. And he went on, after his mother passed away, he went on, he ran away from home at 12, him and his dog, he and his dog, and he figured out how to get the train to Washington, D.C., where his grandfather lived. Oh, so he proved God. himself to himself. Ah. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. And he taught that with everybody that he came in contact with, mm -hmm. especially with his children. He always believed, it doesn't matter that you made a mistake, how are we going to get up and fix it? And when you're talking about the Klan era, my father raised us, and this is the way that he operated, he did not see color, he saw heart. Oh. So that's, and if you probably see Tina, I'm all over this community, I don't care who you are, what color you are, if you have a beautiful heart, we connect and we make beautiful music. My father lived that same way. And really, when you get to the core of a human, it is about the heart. It is. Yes. And it I is. think that's what they saw yes. in my father. And opportunities came because he was not afraid to go out there and just do it. Well, you know, I'll tell you one of the things is how he got to the West Coast. Um, my father, of course, he married our mother from Kentucky. He was actually stationed in Fort Campbell, uh, Kentucky. Which we and brought hats for you all. Oh. Yes. And 82nd Airborne. Yes. yes. 82nd Airborne. And Thanks. it has a... You know, the oh, day he was born you. and the day that he exited the stage. Look yes. at that. PFC Willie J. Frank. Yes. Excuse me. So cute. <laughs> you on know, you. I was in the Navy yes. for 12 years. Yes. Oh, you're kidding. Of course. So she Good understands you. clearly. Yes. You were saying, uh, what were you saying, though? So, what I was saying was, hand. he ended up, this is a small story. We keep it short. It's a big okay. story, but we're going to make it a small yes. story. Yes. So, uh, my father married our mother, and he was still going back and forth in the service. Mm -hmm. And my dad built her first home in a white neighborhood, a brick home. Oh, my. And that was considered, oh, my time. God. Like, you have a home, and you are also, it's a brick house, and mm -hmm. it was built in a white area. Mm -hmm. And so all that was great, and my dad would buy her a new car every year. So this one year, he wow. bought her a convertible T-Bird. <laughs> it was red with a white top. <laughs> and his brother Woo. came to town, which was a partier, and my father allowed him to drive my mother's T-Bird out, and he totaled her car out, and they didn't have the insurance on it yet. Ooh. Was my mother hot? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that created disturbances in the house. Okay. So anyways, the long and the short of it is, somehow they got into it, and my mother took her children and went home to, her gran to my grandmother and my grandpa, uh -huh. and her family was upset. So something happened a couple days while she was gone away from the home. Someone set the house on fire while he was in the house. And he said he heard a voice calling him, Willie, Willie, get up, get up. And he said it sounded like his mother was calling him. And he said he got up and the whole place was filled with smoke. And he only had his underwear on and he said he couldn't get the window open so he took his double barrel shotgun and broke the window out and he got through the window and watched the house burn to the ground. Oh my. So with that being said, he said he dropped to his knees and he said, God, what have I done? And he said, I'm going to go get my wife and my children and we're leaving. Mm -hmm. And he said he went and had a talk with my mother. She agreed. They went to the church, sitting in the back and cried. He said, I only have $35,000 left in the bank, and that's all we have. Wow. And they went about a brand new Oldsmobile to fit five children in it. And he said, We're going as far west from this place as we can go until we <laughs> drop off of the other side of the water. <laughs> and that's how they ended up coming. 
to California. Uh -huh. They went to Los Angeles first. He loved the beach because he, you know, he was yes. born in on the water, so he's so used to the ocean. But they, it was a little too big and a little too busy. So then they drove further and ended up in Bakersfield. Uh -huh. And that's how they ended up here without all the family, all the drama. And my dad thought, you know what? I need to go out and get work. Mm -hmm. And he started to talking to people and became friends with people. And they liked him. And he liked them. Mm -hmm. And he said he wasn't looking for nothing free, but I need an opportunity. Yes. And he started making friends. I think the first friend he made a friend with was with uh, uh, the John Deere Tractor Company here. Mm -hmm. And then the cement company. And that's kind of how he got started. But he bought all of my mother's friends. <laughs> I love that. All of my mother's family came. You know, as well. over the course of my roughly almost 35 years here now, I have been so struck by how many people I have met or know about who have either been sovereignly called or sovereignly led by God to mm -hmm. this city. Yes. Have you experienced that? And, 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 oh, and here is your yes. father, this remarkable man, yes. uh, who could have gone anywhere on the West Coast anywhere. and coming here to Bakersfield. I like mm -hmm. what you said. He said, I need an opportunity. That's exactly Not what looking said. for a handout. Don't want, a handout. Don't want someone to just give me something. I need an opportunity. That's correct. I think that's an excellent, encouraging word mm -hmm. for anyone who's listening. Right. Give me an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And what's in me, which I see you moving your lips. Yeah, 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 we yeah, only yeah. probably have about a minute left. But you know what I think is so important? Yes, you need an opportunity, but people have to step up, get to the right table, get to the right situation, yes. build yes. the right friendship yes. to be able to get those opportunities. Yes. And that's something my father did. And not only did he do that for himself, but he pulled people with him. He held the door open and allowed so many men and women to be able to come through. Our community is still thriving off of the trade that he taught hundreds and hundreds of men uh, that are still have business. I'm sorry, businesses today, some with hundred plus employees. Mm -hmm. This is so beautiful hearing about your father like this. Just hearing the personal side, um, the foundation. The you're the CEO of mm -hmm. the Frank Family Foundation. That's correct. And you're having a big event coming up this year, mm -hmm. mostly this springtime, I believe it is. Correct. And then, but ongoing, uh, men and women, young and old, I suppose, can apply for scholarships, scholarships. for education, mm -hmm. or scholarships for businesses that they would like to have funded. And you know, of course, you need the right documentation to be able to get those things signed off, and to help people create more opportunities to be available to them to carry on wow. to continue his legacy life. continue his this is so beautiful i love this i love the spirit behind it uh spencer let's take a look at uh, the contact information please the uh if you want to contact uh, get involved in any sort of way the frank family foundation uh and this is the Willie and Loretta Frink Scholarship also. Yes. Post Office Box 13153, Bakersfield, California, 93389. Is this your correct address here? Yes. And information? Yes. Okay, telephone number for direct contact, 661-533-8417. And uh, we want to thank you two so very much mm, for yes. coming in. But we are expecting a... Revisit. Right. We will definitely do that, and okay. we will bring the chief back. Wonderful. I think you'll need a whole segment for her. Oh, definitely. Like a whole show. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a whole segment. A whole show. Yes, of course. I'm sorry. Did you say the chief was a her? No, no, no. no, no. Oh, 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 okay. A whole right. segment for her. Alicia, take us out, please. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us for our first episode of the new year. We will see you back here at 10 a.m. and on Facebook Live next week, next Thursday. We have brand new guests. And Don is officially back, and I'm so excited. <laughs> Please yes. have a great, great week, a great weekend. Be blessed, and always look to God for encouragement. Be yes. Amen. <laughs>